Hello everybody, welcome to Tech With Benefits. My name's Daniel. This channel is going to be all things Samsung and I'm very excited to bring you my first video. And it's an exciting one because you've just opened up and unboxed your brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra. What next? This video is going to be the what next. The first 23 things to do with your new Galaxy S23. Let's go. All right, so your Galaxy S23 has just been opened and you wanted to know the first thing you need to do. Number one, turn it on. Very simple. Turn your new phone on and that is what's gonna kick off the setup process. So, the setup of the Galaxy S23 has become very, very simple. The first thing, and number two on this list, is Smart Switch. With One UI 5.1, Samsung's new uh, Android skin on top of Android 13, you'll be able to easily and seamlessly transfer your content, particularly if you're coming from an older Samsung device. The new process now, all you need to do is on the old phone, have the QR code and you can scan it and it links everything together and copies everything your accounts and starts the process. Later on in the setup process, you'll be greeted with Smart Switch, and this is what will help you bring all of your stuff across. So I'm talking photos, videos, music, uh, wallpaper settings, Wi-Fi settings, mobile settings, uh, settings, settings galore, passwords, all of the stuff that you need to operate your phone comes across. I always liken it to a removal list. Takes everything from your old phone and unpacks it in the same spot on your new phone. It even works if you're coming from an iPhone. Number three, and this is a thing that's often overlooked, is Samsung account. Samsung account is crucial because it's effectively what will allow you to locate your phone if it gets lost, but it also allows you to connect your Samsung ecosystem with each other. So if you have the watch or a pair of Galaxy Buds, for example, you can seamlessly transition that between devices all through your Samsung account. Make sure you set one up. Number four is to add fingerprints. The S23 series has an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which sits underneath the screen and means you can just simply use your fingerprint on the display to unlock it. So make sure you set them up. You can set up up to four and it works really well. Number five on my first 23 things to do is to turn back on all of your syncing in the back end. So if you've got a OneDrive account and you're syncing with your gallery, make sure you go turn that back on. Or if you're using Google Photos for your backup, again, go back into Google Photos and turn the backup back on. You'd hate to start taking photos with your new phone and you'll start to lose some of your memories because you haven't backed them up yet. Okay, so once you've got through the setup process and you're starting to see what else is next, here are some settings that you should change to make the most out of your Galaxy experience. Number six is if you are someone who maybe doesn't want 5G turned on, simply go into the connection settings on your phone and you can turn 5G on or off. This is particularly useful as well where there's not really great 5G coverage. You can knock it back to 4G and enjoy 4G speeds. Number seven is your display resolution. So by default, the phone ships with a full HD plus resolution. So if you're someone who, again, let's face it, you've paid quite a bit of money for your S23 Ultra, you should go in into the settings and under display, under resolution, change it to the full quad HD plus. That way you're going to get every single pixel of that display showing you all of the detail that you like. Another thing and sticking with display for now is refresh rate. The phone has an adaptive refresh rate, meaning it can go between one and 120 Hertz, depending on the content you're looking at on the screen. However, you don't need to keep it at that refresh rate. You can drop it down to 60 and fix it at 60 if you wish. It will provide you maybe slightly better battery life, but honestly, it's probably not worth the battery gains considering what you'll lose with that 120 Hertz 
smooth display like butter. The other thing that Samsung phones continue to do by default when you unbox them is it leaves the navigation buttons down the bottom. Now I get it. There's a lot of people that have been using Samsung for a long time and we've had those buttons there forever. However, gestures have become the norm when you interact with your smartphone. So under the display settings again, you can go on and you can activate those gestures. And there's a couple other settings like leaving the gesture hint on, for example, so you always know where to swipe up from the bottom. Now I know a lot of these settings seem to be about the display and so is this next one. Number 10 is putting the brightness slider straight from the drop down notification panel. At default, you have to swipe down twice to get the brightness slider. Sometimes you need to access it a little bit quicker, so you can go in and put it there from a single swipe down, so it's always there. However, I find you probably won't be using it a lot because the adaptive brightness is so good, especially after it learns your usage behavior. Moving away from display and starting to look at device care. Samsung has an incredible device care menu where you can actually go in and see at an overview the health of your device. You can see your storage, your RAM, and it even has inbuilt device protection and security powered by McAfee. What you'll also find there is a couple other settings like your software updates, diagnostics as well, a new thing called maintenance mode, which they introduced last year, which is really great if you're going to send it away for repair. But to keep your device running smoothly, there's a really handy feature in there called auto optimization. Basically, turn this on and your phone will automatically switch itself off at a time when you're not using it to keep it fresh. Think about when you're running a computer. You always get told, reboot your computer if it starts to look a bit slow or a bit laggy, and it just keeps it fresh. So your phone is the same. You can't keep it on all the time. So a restart every now and then just helps freshen everything up, iron out any bugs that maybe were there, and keeps it going smoothly for longer. Number 12, and a great menu feature that Samsung's had for a long time is advanced features. A lot of the stuff in this menu has been around for a while. Samsung thought a few years ago to consolidate it all into one location, making it a lot easier to access it. And in here is everything advanced you can think of with your phone. There's a really nice labs section, which allows you to turn on things like multi-window for all apps. There's a really good screen zoom one, which takes up the whole display when you're using multi-window. All the way to things like video brightness, which allows you to make your videos extra bright. And there's some third party apps that are supported. So it means that you're going to get a very vivid uh, movie and video experience out of those apps when you turn that on. Something else that I find, and this is number 13, that a lot of people forget to do is update their apps. They'll be going, this app's slow. And you'll go into their app updates and there's a million of them sitting there waiting to be updated. So to take the hassle out of it, in the Galaxy Apps Store, for example, you can click and make sure it's ticked on auto update. So when your phone is charging and you're connected to Wi-Fi, the app, if it requires an update, will automatically update in the back end. This just keeps the apps running fresh and on their latest versions and removes the hassle from you having to think about it. <sighs> Number 14, we're back to display. This is looking at uh, when your display is actually off, you can have it always display the time and see your notifications. Always on display is fantastic. Now there's a few different ways you can have it. You don't necessarily need to have it on all the time. I have mine set to tap to show, for example. So you could potentially prefer that, or you can have it pop up when there's a notification. So you know, well, it's only there because I got a message. It must be pretty, pretty popular. So going on and turning on always on display and then adding it into your notification menu as well is a real bonus. And the last one for settings falls into the performance of the phone. And the S23 Ultra globally will ship with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. This processor brings incredible performance gains, not just in the peak performance, but in sustained performance as well. But considering how big of a jump it is over its predecessors, you might not necessarily need all of that power all the time. So Samsung's got a performance mode 
in the device care settings, which means you can actually make it go a bit lighter on performance. It prioritizes battery life span and also cooling. So it keeps the device cooler. And after all of that, it still turns out that it's running more powerfully than previous generations. So you can get all the battery efficiency, plus still get good performance when you turn on live performance mode. Now let's look at the camera. The cameras on the Galaxy S23 and the Ultra in particular are staggering. And you wanna make sure you get the most out of them. So at number 16, my favorite feature to turn on is shot suggestions. In the camera settings, you just, like the second one there, you go and turn that on. And shot suggestions basically uses artificial intelligence to scan your environment. And there's a database that it looks through of about maybe 2 million photos. And then it decides where best to compose your photo. So rather than you needing to think about it too heavily, it automatically levels the photo out and puts up a little circle and you take the photo and that is the best composition that it could give you for that shot. Further to that as well in the camera settings, you can also turn on grid lines. So if you factor yourself a little bit of a photography connoisseur when it comes to smartphones, if you turn on grid lines, you can use your own eye to put things into the rule of thirds when it comes to photography. I always like to have it on with shot suggestions and then I like to see if I get it right because ultimately, you know, it's like a competition. I'll put it up there, shot suggestions will suggest it, and I've nailed it. But having them both together means you're more than likely going to get a really stunning composition for your photo. Number 18 is a personal favorite of mine, and that's motion photo. There's nothing worse than when you're trying to capture a shot and someone's blinked. Awful. Motion photo, what it does, is it actually captures three seconds of video before the photo was taken. And then what you're allowed to do is actually scroll back through that, capture a screenshot, and you have the better composition than the one that it originally actually snapped. What's great too, is it actually also records audio. So you can then extract that three seconds as a video clip to save it somewhere else as well. And when you don't need the video clip anymore, you simply delete it and it frees up some storage on your phone. Now, more and more at number 19, people are using their smartphones to record video. And smartphone capability has improved out of sight. There's a whole bunch of resolutions on the S23 series. However, the best one to record in is 4K at 30 FPS. Yes, you can obviously get smoother frame rate at 60. However, at 30, it allows you flexibility to transition between the different lenses as you're recording. 4K 60, you can only use the camera that you started recording with. So if I started recording with the ultra wide, I can't then zoom in. I have to stop recording, then zoom. Whereas with 4K 30, I have complete flexibility to go between all the lenses on the back and even switch to the ones on the one on the front. Now there is a whole bunch of features on the Galaxy smartphones. I think it can be a bit daunting and overwhelming. That's probably why the bottom of the phone just has the basic camera features. However, there's a more tab. If you go to that more tab, you'll actually find a whole bunch more features. And if you want to use any of them, you simply just drag it and drop it into the, the bottom row and you have easy access to it all the time. I like to put single take back in there and subscribe to the channel because I will be doing a full explainer on single take as a feature. It's one of the most underrated camera features on a Samsung phone, so I wanna talk about it. But as you can see, you can bring a lot more down and have it to your liking. And number 21 for camera is selfies. By default, Samsung turns on skin smoothening and it sets it only to number two. So you can go in and turn that off uh, to make sure you're getting more of the accurate details of your face. Hey, you might like the smoothening on, so crack it all the way up if you like. Otherwise, if you don't, you know where to go now. Go and turn it on. Now, the last couple revolve around customization. It's well known that Samsung phones 
give you an incredible amount of options to make the phone your own. Can be a bit daunting. So, to not overwhelm people, Samsung has actually developed an another app called Good Lock. What an app. It is incredible the amount of customization this app gives you. And to be honest, it's too much for this video. All I will say though, is to go download Good Lock and have a look through some of the customization options. And then if you want to, I'll do a video myself going through Good Lock and explaining the benefits of it. So leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you'd like to see that. The last point when it comes to customization is an app called Camera Assistant. Now Camera Assistant is basically there to help you when it comes to giving you more options with your camera settings. What you can do in here is you can turn off certain features, you can activate certain things, and it's all in the name of making the camera experience a bit more fine-tuned to how you prefer it. So, for example, if you prefer to zoom 10 times all the time and you don't want the camera telling you what to do, turn off the auto lens switching. Or if you prefer to take the photo the second instant you press the shutter button, turn that on. Or if you find the shutter speed is just a little bit too slow, you can go in into Camera Assistant and activate it a faster shutter speed and slightly reduce the quality. So there's a whole bunch of things that Camera Assistant allows for and I'm here for it. I think it's great. So go on and turn that on. So there is the first 23 things to do with your new Galaxy S23. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Make sure you give me a like and subscribe to the channel as well because there's plenty more Samsung content coming your way. The last point I'll leave you with is enjoy your new phone. Go out and take plenty of photos with this camera system. Start your own Instagram and upload them. I don't know, do what you like, but come find me on Twitter, uh, Daniel Scateri on Twitter. Share me any of your photos, your thoughts about this phone, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo!